Every day we had to have a quota, how much money we have to make, and if we don't, we'll stand out there until we get it. Leslie King knows this stretch of Grand Rapids, Michigan well. I used to stand on this corner. She worked here for nearly 20 years. Every time I got into one of them cars, it was 50-50 chance I was coming back. Sometimes I can't believe it's me. I tell people to look at my eyes, there's nothing there. There's, they're empty. I'm slowly sliding into darkness. A slide that began when she was just a child, abused by a cousin, tricked into prostitution by an older man when she was only 15. And told me if I run, if I tell the police they was gonna kill my mother, I tried to commit suicide. I didn't know any other way out. There was no hope. There was no hope whatsoever. How she made it out alive is nothing short of a miracle, and some might say one of the Catholic Church's best kept secrets. This is a very hidden work and very invisible work. Since before the pandemic, we've been on a journey from Grand Rapids, Michigan, to the slums of India, all the way to the Vatican. To lift the veil on a little-known group called Talitha Kum, tens of thousands of religious sisters in 92 countries who've dedicated themselves to ending human trafficking and other forms of modern-day slavery. Human trafficking is buying and selling of human beings, usually women and young girls and sometimes children. It looks a bit seedy. <laughs> We're the first journalists the sisters of Talitha Kum have allowed to document their work. Human trafficking is everywhere. If you live in small town Iowa and there's a highway going through town, it's everywhere. Airports, train depots, bus depots, take your pick. This is a mighty grubby business that you and the other sisters are involved in. It's not something that I think you think right away that nuns are going to be involved in the fight against sex trafficking. I think people are surprised. If you want people to understand the urgency of the problem, you can't be tiptoeing around it. Sister Jean Christensen in Kansas City, Missouri, has been a sister of mercy for nearly 60 years. Mercies have often been described as the locomotives wrapped in velvet. 60,000 religious sisters involved in this? It's amazing. I mean, you look at them and you know that you are one with them. Their work takes many forms. At a train station in northern India, just before the pandemic, Sister Rose Payeti and her team are racing to help a young girl she fears is about to fall for an old trip. And they just follow somebody who invites them with a promise of job. And in the process, they may be sold to someone else. She will get into trouble because they just met on the way. Sister Rose warns the man, but he scoffs at her. I know I'm a simple nun, a small one. <laughs> I can do very little, not even a drop in the ocean. But her efforts and those of the other sisters are being noticed at the highest levels of the Vatican. Before the pandemic, we were invited to join hundreds of sisters for a meeting with Pope Francis himself, who urged these women to keep fighting. The problems di dentro si risolvono uscendo sulla strada. The work can be dangerous. They said I'll take you. Sister Lorencia Marquez takes us through some of her neighborhood's old brothels, which the sisters helped shutter. Just a few years ago, this was home to a booming sex trade. And we were assaulted by a man over there only. She shows us where a man threw her to the ground. Were you dressed like this? <laughs> and he assaulted you? Yes. He fold me letters. But just then, she sees the man again. He's listening from only a few feet away. I don't get frightened. She went over to him. Hi, Alex. How are you? Asked him how he was and whether she'd see him in church on Sunday. <laughs> and I love you as so my brother. Okay? Bye, bye, bye. That is a woman of faith. Faith and courage and forgiveness. Tough, really, really tough. Oh yeah, they're very tough. Which brings us back to Leslie King. 20 years ago, she was rescued from these streets by a group of sisters. Them nuns would die for somebody if they had to. They weren't afraid. I mean, 
you got pimps from every every city out there and they didn't care. Okay, here we go. She's trying to pay it forward, back on these same streets with her own organization, assisting other women looking for a way out. When you get tired, call me, man, so I can come get you. Inspired by the sisters who saved her and tens of thousands of others around the world. They didn't give up on me no matter what I did. They're a very brave bunch. Locomotives wrapped in velvet indeed. Now, human trafficking is, of course, a very profitable business. The estimates are up to $150 billion a year. Much of that money goes to terrorist groups, armed groups, and organized crime. You know, the Pope, as you saw, is very enthusiastically supporting the sisters' efforts, and he has made human trafficking and modern-day slavery one of his top priorities. You know, we certainly hope this is just the beginning of our journeys with these sisters. They've invited us to, to countries around the world to witness their work, both in the sex trade and also children who are forced into working free in, in various sweatshops around the around the world. And final note, since it is Faith Week, maybe you wonder what the name Talitha Kum, mm -hmm. the umbrella organization, means. Mm -hmm. Well, it means, it's from the Book of Mark, and in Aramaic, it means... Maiden, I say unto you, arise. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was, wow. Wow. The bravery and courage watching that <laughs> nun go face that man a second time was just amazing. And to be fearless with it, wow. Cynthia, that was wonderful. Oh. Faith and works. Oh, Faith well, and awesome. works. They're extraordinary. Thank you, Thanks, Cynthia. Cynthia. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.